was from there that would come what would eventually be known as the philosophy of fire and light, which the Bible thinkers and manipulators, the early Christian parasites of Rome, did their best to emulate and imitate or eliminate from Earth's consciousness time zone records as they compiled their book from a multitude of stolen ancient scrolls. Now, before we continue, please don't think that humanity began on this planet. In fact, we will discuss in chapter two, man's meta-terrestrial origins. But for now, we will stay with the most recent history with the time span of the last 250,000 years. So in spite of their secret insidious work, which still continues today, much of the advanced knowledge and sciences of the masters have been decoded. In Earth's ancient history, the masters possessed of such powerful astral light and intellectual content that their harmonic vibrations lay far beyond the comprehension of those most advanced modern day sources and sciences. Ancient scrolls now possessed by the Vatican and other co-conspirators of the Illuminati that only the master sages could have produced, speaking of first-hand accounts of their experiences. So-called prehistoric records are stacked with accounts of the golden age, of heroes and sheroes, of giants and divine statues, of demigods and sons of gods who malign or aligned with men who left highly advanced codes of law and sophisticated manuals of civilization which manifested a mastery of self, time, and space that no so-called primitive savage could have achieved, or even so-called modern man for that matter. For the time being, I'll just give you a few of these grandmasters' names. They were Osir, Issa, Heru, Imhotep, Quetzalcoatl, Ptahotep, Jehudi, Hermes, Anu, Buddha, Zoroaster, Lotsi, and Amurabi. And the list of hundreds of others still linger in the clutches and the bowels of the Vatican or hover in the dim light of the Akashic records and the remotest of ancient days. Brothers and sisters, our ancestors were indeed superhumans who left behind profound evidence of their greatness, scrolls which have stood the test of time as the norm of perfect wisdom and spotless conduct. But then the clouds of ignorance and superstition began to gather over the consciousness of humanity, predicted as it turns out by the masters themselves. The European virus of war, conquest, and oppressive control, modulated and created genetically from a fear-based consciousness paradigm, began to consolidate into the formidable force of what we see now in the fourth century, where we find a group of scheming bastards bent on greed and world domination, compile their Bible in 325 A.D. from the copious works stolen from the conquered civilizations of these masters. Writings which consisted of fables, <coughs> fictions, parables, allegories, myths, and symbols, and then presented these sublime works of the highest sciences as dead letter history to a deceived, dumbed down world as the word of God. But the works of the ancient masters were not written to deceive or to enslave, their stories were actually the stories of the highest scientific formulas dealing with the metaphysics of existence. They considered in their sciences the substance of things, not the shadow, the cause, not the effects. They looked not at things that were seen, but at those things unseen, because they knew that things seen are temporal and time sensitive, and those things not seen are eternal. The master saw what was real through the fog of material illusion. They saw as a cosmically projected image from a star-based library of consciousness. Man, let me say it again, is a star-based projected image from a star-based library of consciousness. Oh, it's going to get a little bit <laughs> Man is a codex of hidden knowledge constructed in circular waves of nun to the square of the four elements, archetypes, and substance, himself possessing four interpenetrable bodies of subtle composition, which we expressed in, in qualities ranging from a dense physical coarseness to the varying degrees of astral consistency, all bound and linked together by the cosmic forces of polar affinity. Now, they say, well, damn, where'd you copy that? I didn't copy it! <laughs> People calling up, arguing that 
Oh, I know where you got that from. No, you don't. <laughs> Not unless you're walking around inside of my head. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I've read a lot. And I don't read books anymore. I browse because they all say the same thing. Once you have unlocked, you find out that you're the book. Right. And that's what the Cosmic Codex is. You. And that's why we want to explore us. And so, the so-called gods or nechers of these sages were not spooks or ghostly apparitions of their superstition, but cosmic forces appearing on Earth in the form of life and mind. Realities of the cosmos, not the stupid blue-eyed, caucasoid, savior god men pushed on all in hot pimp preachers to a clueless population of sheeple and cattle throughout the centuries. The nurturers and gods of the commission masters were the personified rays and energies of the intelligent omniverse, which so-called modern science is only now beginning to rediscover. And on such programs as NOVA, kissing their own asses over the greatness of their new discoveries. This ceremonial display of mutual ass kissing for new ways of looking at reality is best seen exemplified in the docudrama called What the Bleak Did We Know? And this, I, this is ironic that I, you know, Brother Marlin sent me this tape called What the Bleak Did We Know? And I know everybody on ran and saw it. And it was then that people start calling me, oh man, did you know? Same people I've been teaching for 20 years. Did I know? Is anybody listening? Only when Mr. Crackersoid says, it is so. I have blessed this. Now you niggas can listen. <laughs> and it's constantly this thing where, you know, uh, you know, did you see it? Why would I want to look at that? They're trying to catch up. We want to take the race out of contention. We want their only vision of dust in front of us, in front of them. Leave them behind. We've been too busy looking at them, not paying attention to ourselves. It's ironic that for nearly 30 years I've been speaking and teaching about the exact same things these crackers have been had the chance to make a movie about. And brothers and sisters who know my work, have my takes, call me excited to tell me about how much they've learned by this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it shows to Goya that Willie Lynch is alive and well and still festering amongst black folks, even in the metaphysical underground. Brothers and sisters, the revealed knowledge of the ancient master shows that our people can and did exist above the status of victim and prey due to ignorance and immutable law. As adepts and sages, they worked in harmony with the divine cosmic plan. But do you know what? As I look around at our species today, I regret to say that these lofty levels of spiritual attainment are far beyond the present capabilities of the masses at large. As long as they are controlled by Eurocentric crackazoid ideologies, spoon-fed to us through corrupted institutions that live on darkness and thrive on ignorance, we are doomed to the purgatory of clueless souls and religious bigots. Ecclesiastical propaganda has created a mass psychological hysteria, a theopsychosis that has become extremely dangerous for teachers like myself, Brother Dr. Blair, Brother Bobby, Brother Steve, Brother Ashwa Kwesi. We have witnessed such attacks throughout the histories via the Roman Crusades and their Inquisition and the systematic destruction of every conscious raising movement for melanated people in the diaspora over the last four decades. And even Mace Windu, a black Jedi master, can't get those. <laughs> Brothers and sisters who have acquired the knowledge and the courage to attempt to improve the consciousness index and status of their people are murdered, intimidated, disappeared, or constantly harassed by the parasitic elite who thrive like maggots on the carcass of ignorance. And the same deceived and enslaved masters ask, why don't the masters come out of hiding and teach? Why don't we see them? Why don't they light the ways of the golden path for us? I'll tell you what, make it safe and profitable enough 
so they can buy a little food, necessary clothing, and keep a roof over their heads, and they will appear in droves. Trust me. Now, over the past few months of my semi sabbatical, I found myself focusing mainly on topics dealing with the mundane mischief of the Illuminati and their ongoing quest for world conquest and domination, during which time I became somewhat neglectful of those students who wanted to study the higher arcane sciences. I neglected to maintain a vital focus and general attention to those pristine, that pristine purity of metaphysical thinking. Today I hope you will join me with some more hardcore serious metaphysics as I attempt to correct this trend at least for a little while. Now don't get me wrong. I do not intend to entirely stop the black news and the clueless community report. <laughs> if I feel that there are pertinent issues worthy of mention, we will talk about that at halftime. You better believe that I am still fully, and I do still fully intend, <coughs> call it as I see it, especially where it comes to elitist, crackazoid, Negro collaborators, fascist feminists, politicalisms, pulpit pimps, and Asian provocateurs, but during the next few lectures, not with the same intensity. I've decided for a time being to leave my hot pursuit of the Illuminati to those younger code breakers and future adepts like Brother Chris Dot, Rashid, Aleem, Brother Rich, Brother Basaneta, Brother Nkosi, Brother, I brother Big Man, I can't bring us in there. Brian, Brian. Tetragrammaton 2, have I done a lecture like this one that we are about to share? And I've received many calls over the last several months. Case in point, I got a call from a good brother out of Atlanta who said something extremely profound to me actually helped me to make up my mind to return to the higher sciences. Just before I hung up the phone with him, I heard the brother give us hope. You know how you, brother, saying something right before you hung up? I heard give us hope right before you quit. Now, that statement knocked me on my ass quite for a minute. I literally stared at the phone for about 20 seconds. I said, hope? I know that nigga don't think I'm Jesse Jackson. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know something? It dawned on me as I was thinking about that. What's missing from our people today? And why is it that the Christians are winning over our people? Mm. Yes. They ain't got shit to say. <laughs> but they are giving hope. <laughs> And that's what seems to be the highest commodity out there today. You give people hope, and they will break your door down. I don't care what you're selling. You can sell a wet, wet bag of shit. You can put it up there, steam it, and fry it. And they'll come by As long as you tell them there's hope in that bag of shit, they'll come. I'm doing some fasting and purifying, so the sisters here are medicinally keeping me up for the next six hours. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. No way wrong. Brother Troy, this is the name of the brother. The brother's name is Troy, a very good brother, uh, out of Atlanta, said that nearly everyone that he was talking to in the underground metaphysical conscious community feels that most of the speakers, young and old, seem to be seriously caught up on a doomsday trip, focusing mostly on that and nothing else. He said personally he felt that the teachers were too preoccupied with the day-to-day -day bullshit of the beast, teaching what seemed to be more that seemed to the more advanced students as self-indulgent inevitabilities, instead of teaching metaphysical empowerment. That some of the newer teachers of the occult were mainly preoccupied with demonic realms, raising specters of mischief and dead, tortured spirits of confusion to do their bidding, in effect, nothing more than the practice of necromancy. That these new jackers were not properly training their, their students on how dangerous this was, nor how to enhance their own independent psycho-spiritual power, teaching the power of more sublime magic, in other words, instead of teaching them to start dealing with pots and all kinds of shit to mess with other people, <clears throat> teach the higher sublime magic where the real tools, the real potions, the real talisman, the real power is the mind. It made me see that we have become second-class citizens even on the spiritual realm. 
I believe that some of these teachers and how they act are themselves unbalanced and are creating a mental climate of dependency in their students, turning the higher disciplines of sorcery into an addictive drug, teaching mostly the lower techniques of conjuring before their students are prepared. They are teaching anyone who buys a tape to create etheric slaves, creating these unsuspecting and curious brothers and sisters, leaving them with the impression that there are no consequences for such acts, like a spiritual welfare system, no experience necessary, all you need to do is apply. <laughs> Benefits are yours, especially if you're black. But nothing, nothing can be farther from the truth. Yeah. Beloved brothers and sisters, those teachers and lecturers who teach conjuring on the cuff, or menu magic as I call it, to the uninitiated public on tape are grossly irresponsible individuals. It's like giving a loaded 357 with a hair trigger to an inquisitive three-year-old. And yes, you guessed it. Elder teachers and high priests and priestesses from the Mu community I speak to say that they are receiving calls from such people asking them to undo what they've done to themselves. And why is this type of magic exercising failing today to produce wholesome fruit? Let me just give you a reason why you cannot conjure the way your ancestors did. The answer is a highly metaphysical one. Listen carefully to all you people who feel you want to stir pots, burn shit, send shit somebody out, you know, grab some, some, some menstrual blood and start sprinkling it someplace and do all kind of shit to see if you can get your way. Check this. The present paradigm envelope of consciousness of the past eon is imploding around us as we speak at an alarming rate, and there is no stopping it. By paradigm envelope, I mean that every consciousness time zone of activity begins with a clearing of the pollution of the old one. This is to support a pristine elemental environment that the activities of thought would use as the raw materials of manifestation, a zone wherein the higher activities of human thought has not yet been saturated. Brothers and sisters, the present envelope of consciousness used for the past 2,165 years of vicious thought activity filled with delusion, pain, hatred, and suffering across the earth has become severely exhausted. You see, the first, the very first environmental pollution, unbeknownst to most, is thought pollution. And every other type of environmental pollution that follows thought pollution is the residual of that. Consequently, any conjuring you attempt to do using the elemental in their present state of perversion will most surely lead to backfiring and disastrous effects of one form or another. Brothers and sisters, what I'm speaking about here is magic and sorcery based upon the principles of squaring the circle, with the word circle and cycle having similar connotations. The present consciousness cycle has come full circle. Let me say that again. The present consciousness cycle that we are living in has already come full circle, and the circle will be completed between 2012, that's December 21st, 2012, and December 21st, 2019. Now, when the year 2020 comes, a good portion of humanity will have been gone through the fire. They will begin to see more clearly in 2020. Check. 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 Got it? You see, the exhaustion, the exhaustion of our present elemental consciousness time zone was brought about by the careless, irresponsible, and often wicked use of the WORD. That is the elemental archetypes called the fire, air, water, and earth. The pristine harmonics broadcasted to us by the collective cosmic mind became distorted and eventually lost in the egotistical manipulation by these soulless archons who have used them to gain power over the first order true human beings, you and I. This is where the Masonic tradition of the lost word may be used as an appropriate analogy. There are many interpretations for the word or the use of the word and the term of the word in an orthographic sense, but in the realms of metaphysics, it represents the operation of the archetypal, elemental superstructures of creation. That is, fire, air, water, and earth. Now, I'm going to stop every now and then and try to keep us on the same place because 
we got to get very, very subtle and sublime. See, the reason why we're having a problem solving our problems is because we are using the present paradigm structures of thought and vision that they gave you to think with. Mm -hmm. You do not understand how the energy breaks down from light to you. So when you use your thoughts, you do not have an understanding of how to operate the light in order to turn it back, turn it back on them. Well, you can pick up a gun. That's one way of using the light, but it's a grosser form of the light. You can take it to the next state and start using sorcery like they use it on you because you got your arm hypnotized. <laughs> but you don't understand how the sigils that they use, how the words they use, how the technology <laughs> that they use is keeping you in light code lockdown because you don't understand how the light is being formulated in you and what's happening to the cellular structure and the crystalline matrix that comprises and constructs your cells that keeps you in lockdown. But guess what? Over the next few chapters, we are going to get down to the basest of levels of humanity so that when you think about the things that you need to think about, like health and dis-ease, what is that? When, when you begin to visualize yourself as well and healed, what are you visualizing? What are you waiting for a new pill to come along? What are you waiting for somebody to come and tell you this is what? No. Everything about you that was diseased started with you. And everything that will heal you begins with you. And when that happens, you begin to change the way that the atom behaves. Because you did by ignorance. You change the way that the atom's behavior, the natural behavior of the worry and the tonalities and the, vibra the vibrations and the harmonics of the word, the way it's spun to create you, is not the way that you're using it. You're not singing the song that the cosmos gave you. You're singing some kind of perverted, twisted, dissonant harmonic that comes from the fact that you are ignorant of the very powers that you are wielding, not only to others, but to yourself. <clears throat> And that's where we have to find life's purpose. And that sounds so trite. Life's purpose. <laughs> I turn on and watch Christians. <laughs> I tell you, life's purpose is to serve Jesus. I don't know how y'all can tolerate that. <laughs> that's right. That's getting old. That is getting old. And you can tell how hopeless and helpless humanity has become when they got to still wait for Jesus to come. Now, they're going to give you all of Jesus now. They're going to have that sucker hanging from, I don't know, whoever it is they got to hang from up in the helicopter, coming down and be like, ah! And y'all going to buy it. Y'all going to buy it. Brothers and sisters, what is life's purpose? All right, let's get ready. Start taking it to the <coughs> second stage. Life's purpose is to become acclimated and familiar with the dimension that we inhabit. We are totally clueless. The dimension that houses your being in order to become understanding and to express and expand the present peripheral energies that constitute your consciousness. Right now you are in an envelope that they have sucked all of your life force out of. It's like you're inside of this big bubble and they've been tapping on your higher consciousness energies and all of a sudden the bubble done collapsed around you and it's now like a plastic bag over your head and you're suffocating. That's because you want to stick to this old consciousness paradigm. According to the shaman's path, and I will be touching upon something I did back with the old um, eye opener when Brother Chris and Brother Dot were there. I did something called uh, co-greatness. 
and I did a one, two, three series. In the third series, I spoke about this very same thing on another level. But it was called shamanic synchronicity and the blood song. Not too many people even heard about that. But according to the shaman's path, both the projecting entity and its projection, let me say that again, both the projecting entity and its projection are very important because by their dual interaction, they renew life's purpose. Humanity together today is stuck in the cosmic mud. Stuck in the mud because they're stuck in the blood. Let me say that again. Stuck in the mud because they're stuck in the blood. Yes, the blood crystal frequency of humanity has become dull and weak, emanating distorted frequencies of a stultified consciousness programming that has atrophied the abilities of man to gain access to the higher harmonics of his blood song. Blood poisoning. Listen to me carefully. Blood poisoning is nanogenetic intent manipulation. Blood poisoning is nanogenetic intent manipulation. It is the means to control our abilities to digest and braid our own protein-based consciousness memories. It is done to keep us docile, like cattle being vaccinated with hormones and other toxins before slaughter in the market. It is done to disrupt the innate signals emanated by our higher genetic mandates, which allows us to keep control of our own self-steering evolutionary free will mandate. Let me say that again. You don't, you no longer have your own self-steering mandate. In other words, somebody else is driving your vehicle. You think that you are in the, in the driver's seat, but you are not even in the passenger seat. Your ass is in the trunk. <laughs> Why? Because you took out of your ass. <laughs> in other words, the blood poisoning attempts to unbraid and then rebraid our current brain structures. Genetically modified foods are purposefully pre-assembled genetic proteins. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. Genetically modified foods are purposefully pre-braided, pre-assembled genetic proteins that are diabolically meant to teach our etheric astral-based blood chemistries to adapt alien protein templates to change and or to detour our present consciousness trajectories. Chemtrails as for another example, contain highly processed genetic material alien to the human chemistry together with genetically modified food, which all constitute intent vector manipulation. Let me say that again. Intent vector manipulation. Now, what's a vector? I know what a vector is. Okay, good. Somebody else? Okay, I don't want you to just be sitting there like, you know, a nice cabbage patch. A sector. A sector. <clears throat> okay. Oh, a vector. Anybody else? A host. Okay. Okay, a vector could be anything used as a means of transport or a means to carry one thing to another. So light is a vector. Check. Check. Okay. So <clears throat> when we are inside of the creator and we are working towards harmony, and the creator is with us, we are plugged into the cosmic intent. When we begin to eat and go through changes that change that way of us receiving that information, that's intent vector manipulation. Because what they're doing is setting up artificial lights, setting up all different kinds of sound frequency, in other words, a frequency net in which to circumvent those frequencies that the earth would give us, nature, and so forth. And therefore, intent 
vector manipulation. They are made for the express purpose of reorienting your present course of consciousness that was already pre-coded by the infinite mind in your archetypal DNA. It is this organic, melanated, black matter DNA that is to be fed and reinforced by the black or dark matter essence that are being bombarded, you are being bombarded with at this very mo moment. The dark matter consciousness that our ancestors call Melchizedek. So, the new substrate for incubating the consciousness disruptors. Now, here's the deal. They have consciousness disruptors and intent manipulators. One of the ways and the vectors that they're using through food and through the air is your mucous membrane. The mucous membrane is the new vector for consciousness disruptors. Chemtrails, toxic sound wave frequencies, all of these affect the mucous membrane. In fact, the reason why the diseases are going to be so deep is because before a disease can get into the deep tissue networks, it has to go through the mucous membrane. That's a protector. This, the physical uh, skin, and the mucous membrane constitutes the definite protection against the outside world, against any kind of invading force, quote unquote, on the microscopic level. But, but, when you attack the mucous membrane and weaken it, destroy it, or so saturated with pollutants that it cannot help you when they start with the bombardment, that's when you know that you start getting sick like me. I, I don't get sick, boom, but I'm getting sick. But it's good.